So wait, you're just going to let us harvest it? I still remember those words. Yes, the human answered, sort of. We will do the harvesting, but you will get the resource. The deal is simple. You form a partnership with us, and we will only trade this resource to you. However, you must ensure absolutely no other species gets into our solar system, and you must trade with us for what we require. Planetary modification technology, FTL drives, and so on. You must open schools here on Earth to teach our people the things you know. You can keep all other forms of payment. We will pay our own workers. All you have to do is work to maintain your exclusive access. As long as you succeed, you will have access to the resource you desire. But if you fail, that trade right vanishes. We'll protect your teachers and citizens here from harm, but we reserve the right to further trade on our own. I should have understood what this meant. I didn't. Nobody did. It was just such a sweet deal. Unlimited exclusive access to the Zenari mineral deposits. Not even having to fight or mine for ourselves. And all we had to do was help out the humans where they were lacking and keep everybody else at bay. For three years, this worked great. Our armadas were second to none, and our finest educators moved to Earth to teach advanced physics, chemistry, nuclear science, and so much more. Planetary mod tech was so common that it was considered almost worthless to us, and we profited enormously by fighting everybody else, driving the others back, until the war widened and we found that while we were second to none, we were second to all. The trade in Zanari was ground to a halt when we were driven from the system. True to their word, as Bracoli ships replaced ours over Earth, the humans put our teachers and citizens into safe zones. And they made the same offer to the Bracoli government that they made to us, but they first had to prove themselves by fending off retaliation. This proving themselves was a six-month campaign, while the humans promised they were continuing to harvest Zanari for sale, and the cost of the stuff shot up to heights undreamt of, and the Bracoli managed to negotiate a few treaties, distributing Zanari minerals to ally states, creating a coalition to defend Earth. Then, depositing their own scientists and trading their own tech to their human partners. This partnership then went as ours did before, with human technology developing replicators, transporters, advanced agrarian genetics. And they grew rich off the Zanari trade, rich in knowledge and rich in living capital. That is to say, expertise in various fields. The Bracoli Alliance held on to the Sol system for five years, profiting enormously when Earth started trading increased Zanari material beyond the promised quantity in exchange for additional material resources, which they used to build a space station of enormous size to handle colony ships that were starting to settle the modified worlds and moons of their system. When the Jokin Amalgam threw out the Bracoli, they in turn received the same deal, trading ship construction technology, weapons, shields and robotics, for the precious, precious Zanari. So it went. Every few years our devastating wars would result in one power being thrown out, striking a bargain with humans for early access, security and knowledge, and occasional extra resources when needed. And while we tore ourselves apart, humanity continued to expand. Their other planets began to strike trade deals, but required, above all else, the security of their space with the understanding that anyone who harmed one of their planets would be cut off from Zanari access entirely. Fighting for it would be too costly even if successful, and so the crew colony worlds were ignored. Why not ignore them, after all? They were weak, small, low population places, and they didn't have resources we didn't already have access to. So they were but blips on the radar, as Earth colonies went from one to 5, to 20, to 100, to 1,000, until they had small communities on enough planets that, if they were developed, they would have rivaled or surpassed all other peoples. Within 100 years, they had a fleet to back up the defense of their world, but still we did not see what they were doing. We were too used to thinking of them as a weak backwater with one useful resource, and they kept acting like it. 
Wreckage from 10,000 battles floated about their solar system, with salvage crews from Earth clearing it out and harvesting technology from us while we all thought they won't understand it. And still, they said, secure our system and we will trade with you. Nobody realised their scientists had become our equals. They never evidently changed their mining methods. But nobody realised that they no longer needed to mine. They found a way to replicate the stuff and hid it underground, so that it seemed like they were still mining. And nobody realised how crushingly effective their colonial process was. They would fertilise millions of eggs, freeze them, and ship them with 10,000 colonists, and each family would raise five offspring. Then those would do the same, and all the while automated machines would build and establish planned out cities. Thus, in a mere 200 years, their colonies were the equal of anyone else's. I still think back to that dark day, when humans gulled us all so badly. Our strength, billions of lives, millions of ships were spent, wasted fighting one another, and then it was just over. I still remember the last triumph. The Kabinkari had an alliance of 30 species, and drove out the previous alliance of 20 or so, and Earth's transmission went out to them, and all the others. The old way is done. There will be no more fighting. We will trade with whom we please. Power down your weapons, and surrender to the Terran Imperium. Thousands of space station weapons came online across the galaxy, and the fleets of Earth's military, which had always, evidently, run at only an eighth of their real power, powered up to their maximum strength. It was with horror that the galaxy understood they had fed a baby giant. We were Kronos and they were Zeus. The time had come for them to slay their father, and we had given them the power to do it. What else could we do but yield? Our blood had spilled in such quantities for so long that we only realised how weak we had become when faced with overwhelming strength from the people we once thought to conquer with ease. And now, here we were. The dominion of man had begun. All any of us could do was hope that they treated us better than we treated each other. 